have one hell of a personality. Wanna have sex? What? I'm horny. You're stressed. Seems like we both benefit. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV characters with girls way out of their league. We can kiss if you remember to lay out mouthwash last night. I did. For this list, we're looking at the most unbelievable examples of TV men who are married to or dating women that seem far more attractive, successful, or sophisticated than they are. Do you think I'm so shallow that I'm gonna leave you when you're old? What if I gain 100 pounds? You gonna leave me then? Animated couples were not up for consideration, so Homer and Marge could not make the cut. But that doesn't mean my eyes will soon be turning red. La, 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 la. Number 10, Officer Don Leslie Orville and Sally Solomon, Third Rock from the Sun. Kiss me, Don. Kiss me like you've always wanted but never could. Now, Don, now! Oh, mama! The Solomons are actually a group of aliens sent to Earth to research humanity. Look, life forms, and they're cleaning each other. <laughs> but what they never saw coming was how their human bodies would change them. Sally, played by Kristen Johnston, is the group's lieutenant and security officer. Yeah, I'm so glad we decided to skip the movie and head straight for the firing range. <laughs> <laughs> Unsurprisingly, she is attracted to authority, and thankfully for Don, as a police officer, he has that in spades. Well, Mr. Solomon, I can see that you're, uh, you're pretty upset, so I'll just be giving my home phone number to your sister. <laughs> Call if you have any needs. Combining that mindset with the biological needs of her human body, the animal attraction between the two results in an on-again, off-again relationship that's so strong that they can sense each other's presence before even seeing each other. Sally! Done. <laughs> While a tall, leggy woman and a short, overweight man may not seem like an obvious love connection, these two are great together and unforgettable to boot. I may not be the perfect man. I may never make the cover of Pretty Boy magazine. But I'm Don Leslie Orville. <laughs> Number nine, Gary or Jerry and Gail Gergich, Parks and Recreation. I'm Gail Gergich. Gail, you're Gail, Jerry's beautiful wife. Jerry Gergich is the laughing stock of the Parks and Recreation Department of Pawnee. Well, this is my last weep. Oops, I mean, weep. Weak. <laughs> That is, until his co-workers see his family and realize the joke is on them. Now, sadly, one of our three beautiful angels, Melisent, couldn't be here tonight. But our other two beauties, Miriam and Gladys, are going to help Gail and me play a little tune. Married to Gail, one of the most exquisite women on the earth, and the father of a gaggle of daughters who adore him, Jerry has it all figured out. Ugh, Mom, come on! Yeah, jeez, Mom, we're eating. <laughs> no, you just didn't make any sense. <laughs> the couple is played by Jim O'Hare, a character actor most often cast as the butt of the joke, and Christy Brinkley, a model and Sports Illustrated swimsuit cover model three times over. Do we really need to say any more? Honestly, it's still a mystery to me. Like. Was it a hypnosis accident or something where they put Gail under and made her fall in love with Larry and never said the magic word to snap her out of it? Number eight, Steve Urkel and Laura Winslow, Family Matters. Hi, Laura. <laughs> I hear you can't get a date for the dance. So you wanna go with me? When Steve Urkel first appears on Family Matters, he is being fixed up with Laura by her father, Carl, who wants him to take his daughter to the school dance. Hi, Mr. Winslow. I'm Steve Urkel. <laughs> Although his Urkel dance is legendary, Steve is the epitome of a nerd. Now, if I do the Steve Urkel dance, all you have to do is hitch up your pants, bend your knees, and stick out your pelvis. I'm telling you, baby, it's better than a <laughs> Over nine seasons, Urkel spent his time trying to pursue his love for Laura, and despite some pretty large distractions, his heart always belonged to her. Pretty toastesses with the mostesses? Wow, you guys have got some real A-list people here. 
when he creates an invention that turns him into a smooth version of himself called Stefan. Laura realizes she actually cares for him deep down. So after years of disgust, she learns the true meaning of love. Farley Winslow, will you marry me? And Laura chooses Steve over Stefan, and the two ultimately get engaged. I want to marry you. You do? Number seven, Ralph and Alice Cramden, The Honeymooners. Nothing to get excited about, just remain calm. As one half of the earliest TV couples to embrace the trend, Jackie Gleason was a rotund everyman in comparison to the very pretty Audrey Meadows. He said, heads, I win, tails, you lose. And it was tails and I lost. He won. Don't look at me like that. I learned that trick from you. That's how we got married, don't you? Despite his failures, short temper, and hollow threats, Do you want to go to the moon? Do you want to go to the moon? Ralph will stop at nothing to get Alice back when things go wrong. What's the matter with you? Don't you trust me? I trust you. I don't trust them. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alice's sarcastic responses to her husband's crazy schemes made her relatable. Well, I don't want to look at that icebox, that stove, that sink, and these four walls. I want to look at Liberace. <laughs> Despite her anything but typical beauty. Well, no offense, but uh, she's so, um, mm. And you're so, uh... <laughs> Number six, Jay and Gloria Pritchett, Modern Family. It's Valentine's Day. I thought we were going salsa dancing, not to watch a comedian. You're gonna love him. Trust me. The guy's hilarious. Okay, tell me one of his jokes. He doesn't do jokes. When it comes to his acting credits, Ed O'Neill has a pretty great resume. But when it comes to looks, he pales in comparison to his TV wife, Gloria Pritchett, as portrayed by Sofia Vergara. Very different. Vergara is a former model with a sexy accent and an appealing body to match, and is 26 years younger than the actor who plays her TV husband. Oh, and this must be your dad. Her dad? Yeah. Uh, no, no, that's funny. Actually, no, I'm her husband. Don't be fooled by the, uh... Give me a second here. When we first meet them in the pilot, as much of an odd pairing as they are, they do manage to come off as a great couple. I love you and I don't care how old you are. But that alone does not stop them from landing here. Uh, it's, it's supposed to sound better in Spanish. Voy a hacer la brisa en tu espalda, no quien te escupa en la frente. Wow, oh, it's beautiful. It's really it's really nice. Nice. Number five, George Costanza and Susan Ross, Seinfeld. Steven J, always a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. George Costanza is a pitiful character that, though hilarious, is not exactly relationship material. Yeah, well, what are we looking at here? I mean, is this guy like a real loser? No, not a loser. Despite that, he has one pretty girlfriend after another on the show. In fact, he even manages to catch the eye of the dazzling Marissa Tomei at one point. <laughs> You're so right. I never thought of it like that. Manure, ma, and the newer. <laughs> but it's Susan Ross that becomes his longest standing romantic interest. George, what is it? Will you marry me? <laughs> She's an elegant woman who somehow becomes engaged to the short and petty man until her untimely demise due to a mishap with their wedding invitations. Don't get us wrong, we love George as much as anyone, but just try to envision being in a relationship with him, especially if you have good prospects in life. Oh, yeah, this is my fiance, Susan, this is David. Oh, David. fiance. Boy, you could have done a lot better than him. <laughs> Number four, Todd and Melissa Chartres, the last man on earth. Hey. I'm Todd. When a virus has ravaged the world and only a handful of people are still alive, Todd and Melissa meet and very quickly afterwards begin a romantic relationship. You are good. <laughs> All right, your turn. Unlike some of the other shows on this list, however, we totally understand what brought them together. He is undoubtedly the most likable survivor. I donated one of my kidneys to my foster brother, Hector while she is the most beautiful and down-to-earth. Yeah, again, Boning. got it. 
That in no way downplays the fact that the overweight Mel Rodriguez is not at all as attractive as the gorgeous January Jones. We did it, Phil. Melissa and I had sex. No way! <laughs> Number 3. Leonard Hofstadter and Penny, The Big Bang Theory Oh, hi! 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 <laughs> hi! The Big Bang Theory is chock full of couples that seem to showcase the out-of-his-league trope. Like Howard and Bernadette, for example. But it's Leonard and Penny that take the cake. But before you say anything, have you ever heard of Schrodinger's cat? <laughs> Actually, I've heard far too much about Schrodinger's cat. A scientist and an unsuccessful actress, they make each other more well-rounded and they feel lucky to have each other. <laughs> Don't push it. As a married couple, they take turns as to who has the upper hand in the relationship, which shows how great they are together, despite their issues. Leonard, I'm... You're not only the love of my life, I mean, you're my best friend. And... You've got a friend in me. <laughs> So why are they such an unlikely couple? Just look at them. If you don't see it, then we don't know what to tell you. How could you not tell me that? I wanted to tell you in the car, but you told me to stop talking. Number two, Doug and Carrie Heffernan, the king of queens. Doug. What, he's making fun of my shorts again. <laughs> he's five, be the bigger man. Kevin James has had a pretty great career in Hollywood, having starred in movies and this television show. But it's pretty clear that his looks are not what made this all possible. Would you stop it? You're not fat, you're... I know, husky. Husky. Yeah, husky. That's right. <laughs> Leah Remini, on the other hand, is a former magazine cover girl who steals attention wherever she goes. You're so great. Oh, heck. So in real life, the likelihood of them ending up together seems minuscule. You know, it has been 17 days since I've enjoyed you. <laughs> and I assume it's been months since you've enjoyed me. <laughs> to say that these two belong in different leagues is an understatement, as the only thing we can compare that to is a major leaguer playing t-ball. But hey, that's what we've got TV shows for. I love you. <laughs> Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Woo! Hot! Excuse me? Outside. I'm schwitzing like a pudding at a picnic. Huh. What? Coward. Moron. I hate you! I hate you! Remember the, the first night you stayed over, it rained and it rained. And then... When the lights went out, we lit candles. God, so romantic. Don't you miss that? Well, we're having a nudist party with our fellow nudists. We're, uh, nudists. Oh my God, I love Terrific Lady Day. Yeah, you should, but you know what you're gonna love even more? Terrific Lady Night. Ooh. Wow, Kate. And all out. You deserve a kiss. Okay. Number one, Tobias and Lindsay Bluth Funke, Arrested Development. You're gay. No, no. no I'm, not, I'm not gay. No, Lindsay, how many times must we have this? While David Cross, the actor who plays Tobias, is by no means a beefcake. It's good. Yeah. It's going to be good. And Portia de Rossi as Lindsay is quite obviously a stunner. It is obvious I'm not wearing a bra, right? Oh, I can't take this anymore. Their looks alone aren't enough for them to take the top spot. On top of the disparity between their physical attractiveness, Tobias is a down-on-his-luck former anal rapist. And yes, we know that looks bad on a card. You were almost arrested for those business cards. Yes, no, it did not look good on paper. While Lindsay is the princess of a wealthy family. It'd just give Dad one more reason to think that I've got nothing to offer but my looks. However, they are both broken people who can't actually bear to be apart for very long. So much so that he pretends to be a British nanny to stay close to her and their daughter. It was the exact plot of the film Mrs. Doubtfire. Meanwhile, she puts up with his being a never-nude, among his many, many other eccentricities. I'm afraid I just blew myself. <laughs> which makes them an unforgettable, albeit unequal, pair. Yeah. For me, Tobias. 
That too. Do you agree with our list? I hear you like comic books, Con. This is true. What TV guy is with a girl that you think is out of his league? Yeah, some freaking fat dude named Todd. For more TV top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Why do we want that? Because there's a lot of gorgeous blondes out there who don't believe they can land a short, nearsighted scientist. Let's give them hope. <laughs>